This multi-stakeholder forum is part of a series of activities under the OML Center's Balangay Media Project, which aims to raise awareness about some of the underreported climate issues in the country, identify key opportunities and challenges in reporting, and explore solutions to turn these stories into action. You will definitely learn more about this project. And to open today's discussions, please welcome our partner and co-presenter for this forum, who is all about finding solutions to the climate crisis we are in. Please welcome the Climate Reality Project's branch manager for the Philippines, Ms. Nazarin Castro. Good morning, Naz. Good morning, Mana. So good morning, everyone. On behalf of the Climate Reality Project Philippines and our partners, the Oscar M. Lopez Center and Asia Society Philippines, I wish to thank all of you for joining us today. Dr. Anthony Lizerwitz, the director of the Yale Project on Climate Change Communication at the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies, said that there are five key concepts that people need to understand about climate change. First is scientists agree, it's real, it's us, it's bad, but there's hope. To this day, most of you will agree that the stories we hear and read about climate change are focused on the it's bad part. This cannot go on any longer. If you are to win the fight against climate change, we need to complete the narrative. It is bad and it is getting worse by the day, but we, de we can definitely still do something about it. This is the spirit that brings us all together this morning highlighting the critical role of the arts and humanities in climate change. This forum aims to foster dialogues on how we can utilize powerful storytelling to communicate both the urgency and solvability of the climate crisis, to make climate change less abstract, distant, or complex for most Filipinos, and to avoid causing climate anxiety and hopelessness among our youth. We need to show that what we can do and what can be done and what is already being done on the ground. We need, feature, we need to feature role models, ordinary folks or organizations doing what they can to make differences by advancing climate action with their communities and their own spheres. We need to report about solutions, scalable and replicable solutions that could be implemented in other places or could inspire communities to devise their own climate actions. We need more communicators like everyone in this room who are ready to take on the challenge of making more climate stories that will not just generate empathy and understanding but also offer a sense of hope to our Filipino people. Let me also take this opportunity to thank in advance all our climate reality leaders who are part of this forum, our facilitators, and our participants who will serve as resource persons during the brainstorming sessions later and who are ready to share their wisdom, insights, and experiences in the different campaigns of our featured teams today. On this note, I hope that today's forum will serve as a springboard of ideas for more collaborations. Let us utilize this platform to empower one another to deliver more compelling stories on climate change and solutions. Mabuhay po tayong lahat. Thank you, Naz. Yeah, I think to put it very simply, you know, everybody has a role to play at this point towards climate action. And I think that's where a lot of the exciting things can happen. So for today's forum, is, it is organized in two parts. We will first have a roundtable discussion on different approaches to climate storytelling, followed by a brainstorming session, which you will actively, which you will get to actively participate in through a breakout room of your choice. So to tell you more about the roundtable discussion and to help us host and moderate it, may we call on Ms. Christine Joy Galang, Communications Officer of the Climate Reality Project Philippines. Good morning, everyone. Um, I am Christine Galang of the Climate Reality Project Philippines. Um, I will be your moderator for the first part um, of our forum. So the theme of today's forum is turning climate stories to action. Exactly, how do we turn stories into action? Um, for a roundtable discussion, we are going to talk about climate storytelling. To do that, we are featuring five of the 10 teams that joined the Balangay Media Project through the Umalohokan Fellowship. They will share with us the climate stories they featured in their campaigns and the kinds of activities they carried out to tell these stories. 
we have also invited an amazing panel of seasoned storytellers and communicators to help us gain a better perspective on the issues, challenges, and opportunities experienced by each team. Their insights will surely be useful for the breakout sessions that will follow later. Um, each presentation will be followed by insights from one of our panelists. And after all teams have presented, we shall open the Zoom floor for questions from our participants. Um, so you can already, um, while, the, while our presenters are presenting, you can, also, you can already type in their questions so that our team can um, collate them. Yeah. So, all right, let's not delay this any further. Allow me to introduce our first presenters. To talk about climate reporting in traditional media, please welcome Umalohokan Fellows Isi Toledo and Gaya Kabiko, both writers at philstar.com. They call themselves the G Unit. So, as part of the traditional media, Paul, we'll, be reporting, we'll be reporting on how to make climate reporting more relatable to Filipinos. Now, Ang unang nakikita ko naming problems kasi is major news organizations are mainly based in Manila. Um, may mga mayroong mga bureaus sa mga iba't ibang regions pero medyo understaffed po sila. So yung mga staff po ng mga nasa bureaus medyo all around. So police reporting, beat reporting, yung mga nasa climate, environment and food security po, medyo part of the whole na lang sila. So wala po talaga naka-center for the, um, the agriculture sector, especially sa mga communities na talagang agriculture-based. Then, uh, ito po yung isa sa mga major problems. When you say, cli when you say climate change, napaka-scientific po kasi niya. So kahit, kahit kami minsan nakaka-intimidate siya, medyo technical talaga eh. Specifically kapag ang mga nagsalita mga scientists, yun po yung medyo mahirap na part. Mahirap siya i-deliver, mahirap siya maintindihan para sa mga, sa mga hindi na sa science community. So kailangan ng part ng, part ng part ng trabaho ng communicator na dapat gawin siya mas simple. So dapat mas may relate siya sa mga pang everyday life ng mga tao. One more challenge is yung climate and environment. Hindi siya may hindi siya ano. Hindi siya dedicated na bit. Sa sa, tra sa traditional media sa bit system kasi parang yung DENR, yung DA, yung DAR, I mean Agriculture and Agrarian Reform Department. Part siya nung sa QC circle kasi magkakalapit po sila, di ba? So hindi walang dedicated na tao doon. No? Minsan uh, may mga nire-relieve lang. So hindi minsan nga part siya ng business kapag involved ang mining, minsan kapag nagsalita ang palace about that. So walang dedicated na tao na sumusunod talaga doon. So paiba-iba siya. Depende kung sinong agency ang involved. Now ang proposed solution po namin diyan is number one, mag-focus tayo sa adaptation and mitigation. Ito yung way para ma-involve ma natin yung community. Itong nasa baba na ito, ito yung ginawa namin recently, around I think a month ago, yung nasa, ito yung sa Nueva Ecija. Dito involve yung farmers dito kasi directly affected sila. Then ito yung nasa Marikina, yung nasa bandang baba. <clears throat> so basically yung stories on adaptation and mitigation kasi, they will directly affect the people na involved doon sa community or doon sa environment. So talagang ma may involve sila, naiintindihan nila kasi sila yung na-interview at sa kanila mismo nang gagaling yung, yung efforts. Then, eto. Kung magre-report pa tayo sa issues, uh, minsan kasi kapag, for example, may typhoon na, ang, ang nire-report natin is yung damages. Kung, for example, yung bagbiyong ompoy, merong something billion pesos worth of damage, pero hindi natin siya nire-relate kung paano siya nakaka sa food security. Like, for example, that, uh, pag, tumaas, pag nagbagyo ba dito sa Central Luzon, gano'ng kataas ang itataas ng presyo ng bigas sa Metro Manila? So, doon po. Doon pa lang sa part na yun, ma makakarelate yung tao. Kasi directly sa kanila yun. Eh. Yung direct yung effect sa kanila. Kasi yung, yung parang sila sabi ng isang panelist, from farm to fork. So, yung dapat na nasa lamesa muna maapektuhan dahil nangyari itong sakunang ito. Then ito, sabi kanina, 
yung replicable solutions, may mga bagay na ginagawa sa ibang lugar na pwedeng i-adapt sa panik sa ibang lugar pa. So dito sa Manila may mga na urban uh, urban gardens na nakakatulong siya sa supply ng pagkain, especially nung pandemic, malaking tulong siya. Then ito yung mga nasimulan namin na Noong 2018, this was part of a series po. Uh, noong 2018, at yung story na ito, itong series na ito, yung People on the Periphery, it's about government projects and how it affects, number one, the environment. And number two, how it affects the people living in that environment. And number three po, kung paano siya nakaka sa food security, food supply, dun sa community na yun So for example, itong fed by the water, hindi lang mga ano mga fishermen and ito yung about sa ginagawang airport sa Bulacan. Ha? So yung food security doon, hindi lang, I mean yung, yung issue sa food security, hindi lang siya nakaka-apekto doon sa mga barangay within those, within that area, within the coastal waters. Kasi yung mga islang nakukuha dito, nadidistribute din hanggang Metro Manila. So directly affected yung mga tao. Then, ito rin, uh, last, I think last year, ano, 2018, 2019, si Gaya Kabiko, yung kapartner ko, nag, naging, siya, siya na naging dedicated na reporter ng philstar.com for climate and environment. And she's been spearheading the, the campaigns and the stories recently. Galing din siya sa COP last two weeks ago. And nandun yung mga stories niya. Then ito, what we aim to do, uh, by the, by, with starting this project po dahil sa Balangay, ang plano ang magiging aim talaga is ang climate and environment, isama natin siya sa susunod na election. Dapat talaga i-push natin yung mga kandidato natin na pag-usapan nito. Dapat makita natin kung anong plano nila. Then, focus tayo sa solutions and adaptations. Kasi again, solutions and adaptations, for example, yung solution sa Nueva Ecija, pwede siyang i-adapt sa ibang lugar tapos i-modify na lang nila kasi definitely may mga ibang mas magagandang ideas diyan eh so at least we can start kumbaga nagko-contribute na tayo sa usapan then translate numbers into actual people so yun nga po kanina instead of just reporting the damages i-report natin kung ano effect direct effect niya to sa community at yung direct effect niya sa mga taong nakikinabang and That's it for me, Paul. Thank you. Thank you very much, EC, and thank you very much, G-Unit. Thank you for the ideas you've presented on how we can frame um, the climate crisis in the context of food security and the agricultural sector. Also, I like what you said about uh, making climate and the environment uh, an election issue because that is also what I think all of our organizations here right now um, are pushing for, right? for the longest uh for the so many years naman the, uh, our elections we haven't focused really on climate diba? so we want um uh, our candidates to actually say what uh to actually um, present to us their um platforms on these issues all right so reacting to the presentation of the g unit um our first panelist this morning is the editor of the property and environment sections and the sub editor of the lifestyle section of the manila bulletin He has been with the broadsheet for 22 years, um, starting as a reporter for health, motoring, and travel. Please welcome Mr. Johannes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to the attendees of this uh, event this morning. And good morning uh, to the uh, G-Star uh, unit of uh, uh, Philippine Star. No? Uh, first of all, uh, the challenge of climate reporting is not only uh, happening in their country. You know. Uh, recently, I attended a uh, uh, climate reporting session uh, uh, sponsored by a Singapore uh, foundation, and it is part of also other countries. No? For example, in Malaysia, in India, in Thailand, in Japan, uh, almost all climate reporters and uh, editors have this challenge of making sure that climate stories reach people that need the information the most. Um, and, and it is a perpetual challenge, not only in this time, no? but uh, that, that, that the challenge is more pressing at this moment because of the, uh, the pandemic, especially in post-pandemic era. 
when we have all this waste and we have all this misinformation and all these things. So going to the efforts of uh, reacting to the efforts of the Philippine Star Unit for this one, I am I'm, I'm, I'm very, very, uh, I find it very, very good. The one that they did, no? you see, no? you, you have, what you've done is very, very nice. No? Kasi, first of all, uh, I, I never noticed the, because uh, for example, in us, the website is very, very you know, rigid. No? Sometimes it's like that thing. But this one, you were able to present it in a very visual way. So that's very good. Because I remember uh, one of the challenge for us also is the fact that, you know, a lot of uh, information on climate is quite hard to digest. So the challenge for us journalists is to make sure that it becomes more clearer, more easy to understand. So I think the one that you did, no, uh, basically more visual, bigger pictures, photos with people of uh, with their faces, no, people in their environment, no, people in their livelihood, showing really the the basic, no, showing the the bare essentials is very good. But always the challenge at the end, because I remember when when I did this uh, whole workshop with that uh, foundation. I remember the final challenge for us is how do we make sure that people who need, it, who need to learn about those things will know about these such things. And not only the bottom part, but also like what Christine had said earlier, how about those in the top also? So I think that remains a challenge for, for all of us, not only for Philippine Star, but also all the media outlets also in the Philippines also. So I think that that's the important, especially now that we're going into the election season. So that's also one of the, I think, the pressing challenges. So I've written a lot of uh, articles and columns about it, calling climate to be at the forefront of the elections also, in the conversations of elections. Okay, okay thank you very much. And I, I hope to speak later in the breakout sessions. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Joe, for Thank your you. insights. And indeed, it is a perpetual challenge for newsrooms to communicate the crime, climate crisis and its solutions to those who need it the most. Um, but it is a challenge that um, it is a challenge that we can overcome, I believe. So through um, uh, discussions like this one. So yeah, let's move on um, to talk about now to talk about solutions journalism. Please welcome Umalohokan Fellows Mavic Conde, Rome Candaza and Apple, Allison, Ferris, who call themselves the Bicol Umalohokan. Guys, take it away. sa pinto na gamam ng ano po ng climate change. Kumbaga, isa siya sa mga kakaharapin natin bilang ngayon hanggang sa mga susunod pang generasyon dahil nga po sa ayun, marami na po naman paliwanag kung bakit tayo nagkakaroon ng ganitong matinding mga ano, calamities dahil na rin sa kagagawa nating mga tao. Kasi namin yung mga epekto eh, yung 2006, yung Rimi, Talagang malupit.
naman tayo sa karanasan ng natural na pagsasaka. Kaya kung baga mas, mas kikita yung mga pagsasaka, yung uh, technology na i-introduce na ng, lalong-lalo na ng Department of Agriculture ay yung angkop sa mga pagsasaka. the doom and gloom reporting without losing the need to call for accountability. For instance, in this photo, human nature gets that the problem is systemic, and people, especially the judges and voters, cared about climate change mitigation, making Tabby Farm the pro-environment winner for the first Bangon Awards 2021. We raised awareness about SDG 12, Responsible Food Production and Consumption, and SDG 13, Climate Action, through the following. Introduced solutions journalism to students and former student journalists, news editors, and school paper advisors. We launched YouTube channel, the Philippine Seed Savers app, and Picolomolokan website as communication platforms for seed savers and content creators. We hosted Facebook Live for engaging with LGUs, partner with NGOs, campaigners, and journalists, commissioned content creators for supplemental campaign materials, and held a contest with open pollinated seeds as our prizes. We created a project brief, although still in draft, as part of our legacy plan. That was the presentation of um, Bicol Umalohokan. Um, while they have their video, I think um, some of the team members are also with us in the Zoom, so they will be able to answer your questions um, later. Um, so reacting to Bicol Umalohokan's presentation, our next panelist is the news section head of Philstar.com. He has been working for new, in news for 13 years and has helped with the news website's initiatives on climate and human rights reporting. Please welcome Mr. Jonathan DeSantis. Yeah, Sir, thank you. you have the floor. Thank you. Good morning. I, act I actually took uh, some notes before the presentation uh, with some recommendations. So, but I was actually pleasantly surprised that um, they had already um, parang they'd already done what I would suggest. No? But uh, going back to the presentation um, and in uh, with solutions journalism in general, no? um, I like the idea or, or the, the um, thrust of mutual aid uh, as you've seen throughout this pandemic also it has been mostly communities and um, small groups that have been helping each other and that theme is uh, seen also in this project in seed saving uh, of basically um, farmers helping each other of course it would be great if, uh, if there was government support but um, it, it has been shown that initiatives like this can be done and um, I was also pleasantly surprised uh, with the replicability uh, of well, of, of seed saving, no? um, that it, it could be, you could be a hobbyist and do it, you could be a bigger farm and do it. So um, you know, the scalability of that solution is a, it's a, it's a good thing. And uh, it's really something, uh, for example, as an editor, that's something that I'd also look into. Like 
uh, how would how would this matter to to the audience no but and that has been answered by basically saying that well you can do it too or you can do it in your area as well um, i also like the uh, focus uh, focus going away from transnational companies and the government and, and towards smaller steps that could be compounded um siguro one one uh, thing the limitation was, would be yung government priority uh, which would be uh, it's more on chemical farming no? so um, spreading stories like these would actually help create um, more public support for uh, organic farming for seed saving um, siguro one thing to consider would be and although there has already been uh, YouTube channels no, um, maybe shorter TikTok type um, content uh, on basically how to do it, uh, why it's good, no? just to, to increase public awareness and uh, increase possibly increase public pressure or support for, for these projects. No? I mean, um, one thing about agriculture reporting din kasi is yun nga, sometimes we focus on the damage, we focus on the government projects. And then magugulat tayo, oh, uh, meron naman palang initiatives like this, like seed saving, that we could actually also support. So basically... Um, it's 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 good to increase awareness of this and beyond your awareness yung how it can be replicated and how it could be done elsewhere um yun, thank you it's a, actually it's a very good job yung suggestions ko and eh. so uh yun, congratulations that's all for me for now and a uh, great job uh umanda ko kan i want ala lang pala one note lang din sa website um i think may typo but Easily, ano naman yan, easily fixed. Thank you again. Thank you, Sir Jonathan. Ms. Apple, do you want to say something? Yes. Uh, for the TikTok, actually, we're working on it. We have many videos, and we're also collaborating with the Beacle Influencers and Bloggers Organization. So that's one of the core focus of our campaign, making it more relatable. Like, when we started this campaign, I don't care about that topic. Right, but right. I'm but now we have more bloggers looking into it like, Ate, how to do this, how to do that. And then we're encouraging them to be responsible in creating content. So we're no longer just the umahulokan, but we're creating a community of local and nano influencers who will help us in this campaign. Yeah, so naisip nyo na nga. So, yun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thank Apple you. and Sir Jonathan. Indeed, no? Uh, we should... Uh, maximize the use of new media also. But at the same time, the theme that we saw in the, in the second presentation is also solutions journalism. Diba? So parang sabi ko nga, solutions journalism is not the future. It is here and now. So we really need those stories out. Diba? So yeah, moving on to our next presentation to tell us more about their investigative take on stories, allow me to introduce the members of Pond B News Asia. Elmer Nev Valenzuela, Richelle Mascarinas, Joel Mataro, and Demi Joe Mabansay. Guys? Is there a video for this? Yep, okay.
share her insights on what we've just um, watched. Our next panelist is the executive director of the Asian Center for Journalism and co-founder of Verifiles. She is a veteran investigative reporter having worked with the Philippine Center for Investigative Journalism, GMA7, GMA7, and ABS-CBN, among others. May we call on Ms. Luzrim Ban of the Asian Center for Journalism. Hi, ma'am. Good morning. morning. Yes. Hello. Um, Hello. Thanks for, for inviting me uh, to give my reaction. Um, hi, Jimmy Domingo. <laughs> hi, members of Pondi Asia. Good morning, um, ma'am. So the, the topic that they chose, which is the Arboretum, is really an urgent topic. And I think I find the strength of the group in photography and photojournalism. Um, in this world of social media where everyone has a smartphone and can produce photos, the public appreciates the visual. So on this point, I think the group was able to um, drive home the point that this is the last lung of Quezon City. Um, so there are many... Uh, th this is... Um, that, that being the case, now this is the last lung of the city. Um, there are many issues that come into play here and um, the group touched on a number of, of these. Um, since the group is doing an investigative report, um, I think there's a need to highlight that the fact that you know many climate issues are rooted in clashes or competition for control of resources which is what happened here no, in the Arboretum. You have a man-made forest, um, one of the last open spaces in Quezon City. What to do with it? No? Do you protect uh, environment issue? Or do you, do you divert, divert the space to turn it into a hospital, which is also a valid undertaking? So um, you'll find in investigative reports that the, there are clashes, eh? there are many clashes. No? So you have environment versus hospital versus housing. So these are the three clashing um, interests in this story. Um, in terms of investigative journalism, no? um, getting to the bottom of things is really a challenge. Um, investigative journalism is uncovering what people, what some people want to keep hidden uh, and getting as many sides to a story as possible and doing extensive interviewing. So uh, the, the group noted that they had the, the challenge of a lack of access to information, um, no documents available, some government, of, uh, some UP officials un, unwilling to talk to them. And these are really some of the challenges of investigative reporting, especially in the pandemic. So this, you have to remember that this happened during the pandemic when um, most people were, have been working from home and government offices really have been shut off to journalists. No? Um, but there's the challenge really. The challenge is really to be able to dig up, uh, to dig up what, what's really going on. What's, what, what is going on with the Arboretum? No? Um, there are many points that can be further developed. For example, uh, the group mentioned that in one, the, one of the interviewees mentioned that there was a referendum on what to do with the Arboretum. And they found out from one of their interviewees that, that there was a problem with the referendum there were some questions in the way the referendum was handled so that can be a, a point of uh, a point to pursue um so th these are things that can add uh can add strength to the story you not know, to make it more uh to, to highlight the investigative character of the story so i guess that's all i have to say all the best to the group Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Sir, do you have anything else to add or to reply to what Ms. Luz has said? Uh, I would just like to thank you, si ma'am Luz. Uh, maraming salamat po. Hindi pa po tapos yung dokumentaryo namin. So even though na matapos itong sa Balangay Media Project, sa amin hindi pa po tapos. So 
Yun lang po. Marami pa kayong gagawin. <laughs> Marami pa <laughs> gagawin. Sobrang dahil pa. Marami pa. Thank you, Sir Joel. Uh, and good luck also. And we're, um, we'll wait for your stories. Okay. All right. So from Solutions Journalism, we've, tackled, we've now tackled investigative journalism, which is also equally important um, in advancing our, the climate and environmental agenda. Right. So um, moving on to the next team, the fourth team to tell us more about their project in the form of short subject films is called the Salikain Collective. Whose members are Ralph Lumbres, Juan Miguel Torres, Maricon Montajes, Nes Roque, Eric's sister, and Rai Tipay. All right, let's um, watch their presentation. In 2019, our team went to Suluan Island in Giwan, Eastern Samar, to implement an art based uh, community project about the environment and uh, disasters. Suluan Island is one of the many islands in the Philippines that is considered small. Uh, in this categorization, experts consider physical dimension, population density, and number of social services and resources. Suluan Island was one of the first uh, place hit by Super Typhoon Yolanda in 2013. And we all know the story. Um, people died, houses, farmlands, and other livelihood destroyed. This incident was an indicator of how vulnerable small island communities are to disasters and climate change. Hi. I'm Ralph. Uh, I'm the founder and one of the managing members of Salikain Collective. And we are an interdisciplinary collective composed of artists, uh, designers, filmmakers, researchers, educators, and community workers. And we're making projects um, related to the environment, uh, climate change, disasters. Getting our inspiration from Suluan Island, we created Sanga Pulo, Sampung Sanga Sangang Kwentong Klima ng Mga Pulo a 10-episode uh, video series about the effects of climate change on small island communities as well as their stories of resilience. Because we know that small island communities are one of the most vulnerable communities to disasters and climate change, and because it is already the research topic of one of our members, we decided to focus on it for our Media Blitz campaign. We decided to make our campaign uh, art-based or narrative-based, so it is a fictional story based on facts, um, science, and personal experiences of small island community members. For our process, after we brainstormed as a team, we interviewed a small island community member, one of our friends from Suluan, Ati Baby. And then we validated uh, her stories with research. So we then crafted a story. The story that we came up with um, revolves around Tala, a senior high school student who is deciding whether to leave her home island to go to college or stay and help her parents. She created a 10-day journal to help her decide. And through this, she learned about herself, her home island, and climate change. We then had another meeting with Ate Baby uh, after we created the draft. So we consulted her about the story and we incorporated some of her suggestions. After this, we went through the process of pre-production and planning the social media campaign. And then we went on to production, so animation, writing, etc. We launched the video series from October 30 to November 8, so in 10 days. Um, each uh, episode was released uh, every day for 10 days. The media campaign culminated in a multi-stakeholder forum where we invited speakers from coastal cities at risk, Philippines from Ateneo de Manila, and of course, uh, Ati Baby as well. In this forum, we asked them to respond to our videos as well as to give their perspectives on small island communities and climate change. As of writing, the 10 videos has on average 200 views. Uh, episode 1 has 418 views. The multi-stakeholder forum where we showed all the episodes and premiered episode 10, the last episode, it had 60 registrant, registrants for, on Zoom and it garnered 238 views in the recording of Facebook sim, uh, the Facebook simulcast. Of course, we could have boosted the post, paying for ads, but we decided to, to try to make it organic. As seeing it as an ad might not be appropriate to the content at least for us. So we hope that its viewership can grow more organically. And also, aside from this, we also want this to be shared in schools and of offline. 
Right now, here are photos of it being viewed in Catanduanes through one of our members doing a research project, project there. And also here in um, Bantayan Island through the organization Goodland. And uh, some teachers that we contacted to share it to their students and co-teachers as well. Aside from this, we also asked uh, YACAP Philippines or Youth Advocates for Climate Change to share our videos in their Facebook page. And we were surprised that they even made their own PubMat and posted each video for 10 days as we did. Now, after this, we still plan to share the videos more, both offline and online, especially to teachers and schools. So if you know any schools or educators we can partner with, please do contact us. Hopefully, uh, the story of Tala and the island of Sanga can inspire people and enlighten them as well about climate change and small islands. Uh, that's all. Thank you very much and uh, stay safe, everyone. All right. Thank you, Salika and Collective. Now to help us see how um, these videos can be used for education, our next panelist is a program host and producer of DZRH weekly radio program, Discarte, a CMMA Hall of Fame for Radio Public Service. She served as president of the Philippine Association of Communication Educators and trained in educational broadcasting at the South Carolina Educational TV in the U.S. Please welcome Ms. Flor Delise Abando, Coordinator for, for Instructional Video and Faculty of the Far Eastern University. Hi, ma'am! Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. No? Um, thank you very much, uh, Salik uh, Hain. Now, uh, allow me to just give you a little context and I'll share some information uh, which I think is very valuable. Most of our uh, presenters earlier already mentioned that many Filipinos find it difficult to relate to the concept of uh, climate change. So all the efforts from the uh, first presenter, even up to the most recent one, were able to give us a, a clearer idea. Hopefully it's able to translate climate change to something that we see, feel, experience. And uh, we will. there will be a call for us to do something about it. So as I mentioned, I will share a few information. And uh, this was actually even um, shared to us by uh, Kato when we did our Pang Usapang Social, okay? Um, in a study by Yale program on climate change communication on international public opinion and climate change, which is conducted between February 17 to March 3, 2021 among Facebook users in 31 countries, it revealed that from Asian countries like Malaysia, Vietnam, Indonesia, India, and Thailand, it was said they have never heard of climate change. Yet some respondents from these countries believe that climate change is indeed happening and is caused mostly by natural changes in the environment. There remains a clamor for more information for climate change. Respondents, meanwhile, from the Philippines, India, Vietnam, Indonesia, and Malaysia said they are very worried about climate change and that the the governments, their governments, including ours, should place very high priority on it. Most of the respondents said they would like to uh, participate in the citizens' campaign to reduce uh, greenhouse gas. Now, meanwhile, in the most recent focus group discussion we had with planning officers of a government agency I cannot divulge, we found out, yes, the planning officers have knowledge about climate change, but they admitted that their programs are not yet aligned with climate change or they're not that able to mainstream climate action. So that causes some concerns for all of us. Um, so much is, needs to be done and uh, Salikain's collective's effort in producing the 10 videos of three minute duration uh, was able to tackle the different challenges faced by an islander uh, in view of the sea level rise and for us who are uh, from the mainland, so it goes beyond like just knowing, yeah, they're most vulnerable. But in each of the 10 episodes, it's able to present like one issue at a time. So it is very digestible, okay? So as we said, um, the, the videos were able to communicate effectively how climate change affects the sources of livelihood of the islanders, uh, the food, the shelter, the water, the, the drinking water and their daily lives. It is able to effectively combine art and I love it, okay? And uh, some of the video footage and the narrative was very clear, 
and quite engaging. Each, able, uh, each uh, episode is able to focus on one clear issue within those three minutes. Okay, and at the end, there was a narration, like something for you, like a food for thought for you to understand certain concepts. Now, the narratives which are compelling and when it is able to intertwine issues of gender roles, education, and even a short satire about Sal N, no, qualifies it to be a very effective edu entertainment approach. A campaign which is able to achieve the goal of raising awareness. Now, as to the campaign strategy of using Facebook as a platform, we know it has its limitations. But it's good that uh, Salikain used also the YouTube and TikTok and has done also a, a multi-stakeholder forum. Now, these videos, however, I believe should have a big wider circulation, and this can be integrated into some science or even Araling Panlipunan for basic education and for college like contemporary issues in the modern world and even NSTP. So we need to tap on, you know, as, as what uh, Ralph mentioned, uh, they are open to making these materials available, and we would like to know the mechanics and how we can help you about that. Now, I would like to also, uh, to, uh, I would like to suggest, Ralph, that you also explore connecting with the church because of the laudato si and the need for the church to take an active action uh, on the environment. I think you would be able to expand your uh, viewership, okay? Now, uh, allow me also to mention a few things that we probably need to work on to further improve uh, the technical aspects, because I'm in the area of broadcasting, so uh, these are the things which I would like to um, add. First, some concepts need further clarification and perhaps may need some animation or illustration. Example, adaptation. Uh, in the recent uh, AMIC, uh, Asian Media Information and Communication conference that we had uh, just last week, and we had experts in um, communication, right? and, and we talked specifically about climate change. They mentioned that when they ask people around, them, what do you understand by climate uh, adaptation? Akala nila, adaptation, katulad ng pag nanonood ka ng film, a film was adopted from a book. Parang ganun, no? kulang. So meron ka kasing menensyo doon, adopt. So those words still need to be clear. Are clearly identified. So I don't know whether you can have a hyperlink so that others, if this is used on instruction material, this can still be clarified with them. So other things like soil erosion, solidification, storm surge tsunami, they're mentioned, but there was no corresponding video or animation that would make the viewer further understand. So if we intend to have this as an instructional video, I think we need to be mindful of that. Um, also was hoping that the voiceover and the video corresponds, okay? As it mentions, kunwari yung falls, pero wala tayong nakitang falls. So even if it were, sabi mo, um, si, si, um, ito ay uh, parang likhain na lamang based on narratives, but still somehow for, for children or even other viewers, they would still like to connect na hindi ka lang fiction, totoo ka, totoo ka. So they like to see this uh, corresponding video and the voiceover. All right. Uh, and please avoid reusing the same footage because otherwise, mawawala ang interest ng tao. Accuracy is a must. Now, in the mention you about sal -en, uh, please do remember that sal -en is not just a requirement for politicians. So, kasi kung gagamitin siya sa eskwela, sana hindi tayo magkaroon ng mali pagkukommunicate, even the issue of sal -en. Then, uh, technically, yung balance ng music at saka ng voiceover, medyo pag-aralan natin, lalo na towards episode 10. No? And while you said that you justify the need for you to use the portrait, parang ano lang ako, medyo limitado ako pag portrait. I'd like to see the beauty of the image. And remember, when teachers use these materials, ginagamit na nila to sa horizontal na perspective. No? yung kanilang uh, perspektibo. So magagamit kasi siya sa classroom kasi pabalik na tayo sa face-to-face. -face. So magagamit talaga itong mga materials. So, and when they show this, uh, it's no longer on a uh, mobile phone, but this is now on the screens. So I hope we consider those. But again, I would like to commend the efforts of Salikain. Yes, this is an effective material, but definitely this, uh, this is only able to raise awareness, but more discourses should follow, more discussion should follow after the concepts 
and uh, issues of small island uh, small islanders or li persons living in the islands are brought into the uh, discourse Mar maraming salamat at uh, congratulations Ralph I was overwhelmed I loved it thank you Thank you. Thank you, Miss Liz. And I agree with Miss Liz. No, I've watched all the videos and they're really very informative, digestible, and compelling, despite being ano, three minute videos. Lang siya, no? So I hope everyone in this room would also um, be able to watch those videos in the YouTube and Facebook um, pages of the Salikha in Collective. Ayan. Thank you, guys. Um, finally, for our last presentation, um, did Team Bintuwa take a more ethnographic? style of storytelling let's find out please welcome members ronald maliao beverly haspe richard and rachel kahilig environmental greetings climate emergencies affect people's adaptation to their environment for many nabaoinons whose source of food is mainly from the river the changing climate makes their life more difficult as a frontline community they are vulnerable we in Tim Bintua, composed of Ronald Maliao, Beverly Haspe, Richard Kahilig, and yours truly, conducted a data gathering activity last September 25 to 26 in the form of interviews, focus group discussions, community dialogues, immersion hikes, and cultural contests with the men, women, and youth of Nabaoy. What's up, guys? I'm Ronald project leader of our OML engagement. I am responsible in the research and science side. We conducted interviews to 126 households in our site in the Baal River in the province of Aklan. 31% of the residents are full-time fishers, but everyone have riverine fishing as an alternative or supplemental livelihood. However, 77% of the 38 full fishers or 23% of the population are full-time fishers with no alternative livelihood or supplemental income. The majority are aware of climate change with extreme heat and rain as the most cited manifestation. At least more than half have knowledge of what causes climate change and Nabaoinan believes it is largely caused by human activities as well as deforestation. More than half of our respondents acquired their climate change knowledge from personal experience, which has major implications on our drive for climate change literacy to the grassroots. The happiness index in 10-point scale is also in decline since 1990s. Coincidentally, our findings also show decline in fish cats since 1960s. The trajectory of decline is similar in all species groups. Fishers in Abaoi River in Aklan use traditional fishing methods and gears, and their fishing and ecological knowledge are transmitted across generations, largely from their elders and community. Watch out for our upcoming publications in Journal for Nature Conservation, titled Climate Change, Indigenous Knowledge Systems and Practices, and Riverine Fisheries, the case of Malay Atlan Philippines. Out from the data and materials we gathered, we launched a Media Blitz campaign entitled Kinaiya It Kailayahan, the role of indigenous knowledge, systems, and practices of Nabaoinons in Malay Atlan in developing local climate change resiliency. Starting October 11, we organized a series of multi-sectoral climate fora called Historia It Panyempo Sa Ilaya. Last October 31, we held the Bugao Kinaiya, a cultural show of Nabao Inons, which featured local performing arts and artworks and display of fishing tools, indigenous handicrafts, souvenirs, and other IKSP exhibits in Nara Resort Nabaoy Malay Aklan with the presence of multi-sectoral stakeholders. Last November 8, we held the open forum, coffee table book launching, conservation conversation with climate advocates and the Ganas film showing in Nara Resort. 
Hello everyone, I'm Richard, field researcher and in charge of producing uh, Daganas. Daganas is an Akyanon word means sound of uh, rushing water. It is a series of documentary videos of Nabaoynon IKSP anchored on the baseline study highlighting the local languages and belief systems and traditional socio-ecological systems which targeted to mainstream the effect of climate change under adaptation. Kinaiya it kailahan coffee table book in to showcase na Bainan's indigenous knowledge systems and practices and to synthesize various activities conducted by the team Bintua. Kinaiya it kailahan campaign patuloy na isinasagawa. Ang pangunahing layunan ng kampanya ay payabungin ang pag-unawa at pagpapahalaga sa kahalagahan ng IKSP o kinaiya sa konserbasyon ng mga ilog at sa huli pagsamahin ang natatanging kaalaman at gawing katuwang ang lokal na komunidad sa pagbuo ng mga lokal na mekanismo adaptive para sa climate change resiliency. To share her insights um, on what we've um, just watched, our next panelist is the Community and Civic Engagement Specialist under Move PH, Rappler's Civic Engagement Arm. Aside from writing stories about movements and civic initiatives, she works with civic and campus journalists across the country. Please welcome Ms. Samantha Bagayas. Hi, everyone. So um, I actually watched the longer version of um, yeah. the presentation earlier. So I'm going to, I took notes. Um, for first of all, I wanted to congratulate Team Mintuwak for doing such a great job. They actually had a lot of activities. So I can only imagine how difficult it must have been to do so many things um, um, throughout this um, campaign. So there are three things that I especially like about this campaign. Um, you especially focus on a local indigenous community. So that gives us more insights on their practices. So many indigenous communities and their stories are often underreported because these communities are often hard to access. They're usually pretty far. So it's hard to get a glimpse or really to uh, understand what their practices are. So um, this is a really worthwhile effort for us to better understand um, their different um, practices and cultures. So it's a good thing that you put in the effort to reach out to Nabaoinons. So I also noticed that much of the campaign was focused on the celebration of their local culture and practices. So with activities that allowed parang a two-way communication, meaning we are learning from them and they're learning from us. So I think it's very important that but when we reach out to communities, we don't go there with our own, like parang with solely to um to achieve our own personal objectives, but it's also a way for us to understand or hear from these communities and see what we can do together to help address their different challenges and um, to really get to know their culture. So we really, really go there to listen. Um, so the campaign was also in the local language, right? I noticed that from the, from the titles, from the names. So I think that also helped with making the Envy Advocacy more relatable and easier to absorb, right? Because usually when we talk about Envy Advocacy, this is usually in English or maybe in Filipino. So sometimes parang it feels... Um, a bit far from us, even though it is something that affects all of us. So I really appreciated the effort to do that since, um, especially in the local language sub-provinces, um, that's really needed. I'm also, I'm actually from CDO, so I'm Bisaya. So I think if I was also exposed to um, and by vocacies um, in the Bisaya language, I feel like I would like but from much earlier on, I would um, be more involved in that advocacy, not just now when I'm a journalist. So um, I also like how this was like a three-pronged campaign. Like there was the academic, like through the journal with the research. Um, there was also the on-ground engagement and community building, like through the organized group of climate advocates, um, the knowledge sessions and multi-sectoral discussions. Um, the, what I really appreciated about the on-ground engagement was the engage, it was um, creating the community, like that group of climate advocates in the community, because that's also important to organize. So it's good that you were able to um, inspire them and make them more involved in this advocacy. And also the documentation through the documentary and then um, the coffee book. So I felt like 
those three efforts at once were actually very helpful. So there were actually so many activities that you mentioned throughout your campaign. So I was really surprised at the diversity in the number of activities. And para tanggal siya dun sa video earlier. But I really like yung quote na sinabi niyo sa longer version where climate change is like the constant flow of the river which can't be stopped. But with proper knowledge and adaptive mechanisms, the vulnerable communities can thrive. So gusto ko talaga siya i-shout out dito kasi I really like that quote and I like the analogy, analogy especially with the name that you made, yung Daganas, right? Um, so I really appreciate that. And um, like I mentioned earlier, um, what I really um, appreciated the most talaga was the community, community building aspect of the campaign. Um, since you mentioned in the video also that your goal was to really involve the community and preserving the environment um, and upholding these practices. So I actually have a few questions. I know that the presentation, both right now and um, the longer version, <laughs> might not encapsulate all your findings. Um, but I did have a few questions while I was watching the presentation. So I'm also curious to know like, what, what are the primary objectives of the campaign? Like, What was the pro thought process behind the planning of the activities? Because I was wondering if your goal is to reach out to the community or is it to bring out um, or to make more people know about the practices of this indigenous community so it can also be practiced in other communities. So parang, I, I was also um, I was um, curious about that because, for example, the cultural show um, that's um, primarily a showcase of the, of the group's um, practices and culture, right? So parang, if it's just internally lang, like within the community, um, what we hope to achieve through those things, parang ganun, like what are the, what's the aim of some of these activities? And second thing, um, one thing that really struck me also was how you featured um, your practices. So most indigenous communities are actually familiar now with how to work with nature to preserve it. Um, even your study, the parang 98% already know about climate change. Um, so parang in a way, many of them are also experts in envi advocacy diba? and conservation. So there are partners to like in envi conservation. Um, so right now, I think it's important long for us for us to also know like what are their needs? So what are their challenges in continuing these practices and their efforts? Like what help do they need? Um, how can we support them in addressing these challenges in um, preserving like young riverina practices nila? Um, especially since that's also your study, right? Because this can also help us in um, thinking next steps. Like perhaps we can give them like civic engagement trainings. Um, learning sessions on how they can engage with government so they can get the support they need, especially since they already have the committee um, building aspect there. You already have this organized group of, of advocates who are already interested in um, pushing for the envi advocacy. And I think um, paired with the documentaries, maybe you can also do maybe like how-to or short explanatory videos on how to do these um, unique fishing practices. Um, so we can also share the knowledge to people too, na hindi lang sa academic, like oh, with the study, but also through um, parang how to videos. Kasi sikat yun sa YouTube actually. Um, if you search YouTube, most of the like um, parang maraming views talaga yung mga how to videos. So I think this could also be very helpful um, in, diba, in community. So this can even be an online campaign also. That can be another effort. Um, so we can also forward the stories of this indigenous community and their um, experiences, their challenges. So I, I said a lot of things, um, but I think the direction and next step of this campaign is really up to you. And I just want to give a few suggestions um, so you can also help further support the community. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Those suggestions are really welcome. No? So thank you and thank you to all our Umalohokan teams for your presentations and to our esteemed panel of experts for your insights. I hope our teams and participants have taken note of the feedback from our panelists as you may draw from them as you, we go into the breakout rooms a little later. Mm -hmm.